All right, guys, welcome back to Wild Outdoor Living. Today, we're talking about the age-old question, or maybe a question you've never thought of before, and that is whether or not in gravel racing you should be riding on a two-bolt cleat or a three-bolt cleat, otherwise known as mountain bike cleats versus road. So I know to some of you, this topic may seem like a bit of a surprise. Uh, for some, this is just a no-brainer. You always race gravel on two bolt cleats. And then for others, this may be a dilemma you are considering for yourself, or you may have heard it discussed elsewhere. And that is that actually many gravel racers are using full-on road shoes and road cleats. So why is that? Is there a reason why you might want to use one or the other? Let's talk about it. So a road cleat uses a road shoe, which is a shoe with very little tread. So you can see that this shoe here has two little traction pads on the heel and two little traction pads on the toe. And that's basically just for basic safety to keep you from slipping and falling on these shoes and hurting yourself. Uh, it's not really meant to provide any extra traction. They just basically want to make sure that you don't fall down on a hard surface, say walking across um, a piece of asphalt or concrete. You have a very large three bolt cleat attached to the bottom of the shoe. The shoe is otherwise slick without this cleat attached. With the cleat attached, there are some traction pads on most of these road cleats. There is some variation between road pedal styles, but for the most part, you're gonna see this style here with some traction on each corner. Now, that's basically the same thing, just to keep you from falling down on concrete or asphalt. But this cleat sticks out well past any of these traction here. Um, in fact, it sticks out farther than anything else on the shoe. So when you walk on this, this is a very prominent piece of the shoe. So the reason why most people would not suggest you use this on gravel is because you may have to walk in your shoes and these are definitely not well suited for walking. So that alone makes these kind of a poor choice, but there's still some reasons why you might want to use some. So the benefit to a road cleat is that the cleat is very large. And so when you clip into your pedal, you have a very large surface area that your foot is actually pressuring down on. So it distributes the load quite well. They tend to be very comfortable. They are also typically quite light because there is no traction to them. And aerodynamically speaking, once the pedal and everything is clipped into there, uh, they're pretty sleek in terms of aerodynamics. So from a performance perspective, the road shoe um, can potentially be a higher performing shoe as well as possibly a more comfortable shoe just given those characteristics. Your mountain bike shoe on the other hand, or what is now even being marketed as gravel shoes, these are gonna be different in a couple of key ways. The cleat is the most prominent change between the road shoe and the mountain bike shoe. So the mountain bike shoe has two bolts here and a much, much smaller cleat. And then that cleat is actually recessed. It sits underneath the tread here. So you actually can't see it poke out. If it does poke out, it's a very minimal amount and that depends a bit on the shoe you're using. So your cleat is recessed underneath your tread, which means you can actually walk in these shoes quite well. There are variations in terms of how much tread you get. The tread on this one is quite minimal. In fact, if you're looking for a gravel racing shoe, you are probably going to want to look at something fairly minimal because you are going to want to save weight overall, but at the same time being able to walk and have the, the smaller cleat. So from a walking perspective, these are certainly superior. From a pedal performance or pedal pressure perspective in terms of comfort and performance, the little mountain bike pedal is not going to be quite as stiff in theory. So you may have some losses there, although that's kind of up for debate. The other difference is that the pressure is going to be put on a much smaller area. So some people will claim that you may have some discomfort or hot spots coming from that smaller pressure area. So whether or not that's true depends on a couple of things. In a high-end mountain bike shoe, you're going to look at a very stiff carbon sole. Same thing on the road side. So with a stiff carbon sole, the likelihood of this actually causing you pain is pretty low. The mountain bike shoe will be less aerodynamic because of this tread and because the mountain bike pedal is a little bit less streamlined. However, in a high-end mountain bike shoes, you can see the profiles are not that much different. There's not a whole lot sticking out. And in a gravel situation, aerodynamics are gonna play less of a factor as the speeds are actually gonna be lower. So what other benefits would the mountain bike pedal have over the road bike pedal? So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. 
One, the mountain bike pedal will typically be double-sided, so clipping in is usually easier versus the single-sided road pedal, although there are double-sided road pedals as well. And the other thing that is probably the biggest difference and probably the biggest concern for people is not only are these harder to walk in, but typically they're gonna get packed with mud much easier. So if you do have to get off and walk, there's a chance you may not be able to get clipped back in when you go to get back on your bike. So I thought I would just walk across this muddy path because I don't normally ride the Madonna. I didn't really feel like cleaning it. And since it's so shiny, I, I kind of like to clean it. So I thought, let's just walk across. Oh man. The bike would have ridden across no problem. Um, but the pedals didn't really like walking across there. The cleats got a tiny little bit of mud in them and just would not clip in. I checked them and cleaned them, even took off my shoes at one point. This took 10 full minutes. I was actually, I've never seen this happen before. I was flabbergasted by how much effort it took to get clipped back into the pedals. Whereas with a mountain bike pedal, that's not going to be an issue. With a Crank Brothers pedal or some of the newer Shimano designs, mud is going to fall right through there and that is not going to be a concern for you. So you're going to be able to clip in and out regardless of the conditions. You may have other problems, but your pedals shouldn't be one of them. So why would someone still go for a road shoe? Well, I think there's two things to keep in mind. Finding a shoe that is very comfortable can actually be kind of difficult. So if someone already has a shoe, and it's a road style shoe, but it's exactly the right fit and it works perfectly for them, that may be something they want to keep. And if they don't make a mountain bike version, say from that same brand and that same size and width, they may want to be able to stick with their road shoes. The other difference, of course, is the performance. For certain races and for certain riders especially, that performance advantage may be a consideration for them. So those are going to be the two main reasons someone might choose a road pedal and shoe over a mountain bike slash gravel pedal and shoe. So when is this going to be a problem? When is it not going to be a problem? That's really going to depend on the course and on the rider. So the more likely you are to have to walk, even for a short distance, the more likely you're going to want to stay away from the three bolt pedal and shoe. If it's a race, and there's lots of these races out there that are mixed with pavement, there's not a lot of walking involved, the gravel itself is not super technical, there's no reason why you can't ride this on gravel. I have ridden these shoes on gravel on numerous occasions because they are quite comfortable. And for medium distance, with just a little bit of light gravel involved, there's really no reason why I would worry about these. As long as it's dry, I pretty much won't have a problem. And so it's not really a concern. Walking around in them is a little bit more difficult, but it's not really that bad, especially if you're not worried about scuffing up your shoe, which you will scuff up your shoe if you're gonna walk in gravel. So if you have a shoe that's already very comfortable, this is definitely a very appropriate choice in many times. If you are new to gravel and you don't have a preference on shoes yet, I hate to say it, uh, but I'm going to say it anyways. The foregone conclusion really is that you probably should be sticking with a mountain bike shoe with a mountain bike pedal. It's just better suited for that terrain. It was designed for that environment, and it's going to serve you better. If you have a preference for road shoes, but you're entering a race or a ride that may have a lot of hike-a-bike or, or may get muddy, say one year it could be dry and it's awesome, but if it, get, if it rains that day, you're going to have to walk a lot, I would highly recommend finding a mountain bike shoe that works for you. If you want to do well in that event, if you want to have a less stressful day, you're going to be served better on the mountain bike shoe and pedal. That is a big investment if you're switching from a road shoe, but it's something you're probably going to want to do if you think you're going to find yourself in that situation. So that would be my recommendation in terms of those. Those are the differences between the two pedals. Either one of them is going to work on gravel just fine. Gravel isn't this weird um, otherworldly entity that prevents you from riding these shoes. So there's no problem with that, but there may be some times when these become a major challenge. So keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll be sure to answer as many as I can. And let me know which style of pedal you've been using for gravel racing. And until next time, we'll catch you later.